Hey YouTube, it's Jesse. Today I'm going to teach you how to spl sprain ankle. So two things you're going to want. Frank a Frank Light ankle brace. An ace bandage just like this one. So now let's begin. Alright, I'll just rest it right on my knee. So, undo this. That was so. Here's what we're gonna start with. You're gonna want to put a lot of padding in between the malleoli to give it support for the sprain, and you want to immobilize the, the the bones above and below the affected site because if it's a joint injury, it's the bones above and below. If it's a if it's not a joint injury, it's the joints above and below. That's the technical rule for this. So now we wrap it in a distal manner. We wrap it higher. Then we go back down. Extending proximally. But we don't need all this material. This is too much in that area. We want to get it down to the foot area. The web space of the foot, we want to try to immobilize parts of the metatarsals because that makes the ankle react if you didn't know that. And then we just wrap some more, continue in a distal manner. And, the last, and then do another wrap around the ankle like that to give it added support. As you can see here, the heel can be free if you want it to be. You don't have to splint the heel in the in the splinting process. It's not required. Hold on. Alright. Now But the thing is I, I did it wrong at the foot. This is the hardest part. It's always the foot that's the hardest part of this splinting prep technique. Always the foot. When it's done correctly, it'll look like this. So now, we take the Franklin brace, apply it, I would say, yeah, I would say make this a little bit higher. It gives you a little bit of added support. That's a little secret I know. And now at this part, take it and put it behind here, wrapping towards the distal end for more support. And now, what you could do is you could do this, but I would say do that because it makes it a little bit easier to to manage and plus it gives more support to the injury site do the same thing here wrap and fold around the Franklin brace and there you go that's it yeah I know it looks similar to a foot cast but it's not And now, it's a, it's, it, it gives the protection for the ankle, and it's not too tight. Don't Yeah, that's another thing, YouTube. Don't wrap it around your ankle too tight. Don't go too crazy with this. Otherwise, it could cause some stiffness. You don't want it to be stiff. You want it to be immobile, not stiff. But you don't want to make it too immobile. There is such a thing as too immobile. A cast would be too immobile for a sprain like this. So yeah, that's that. Next, I'll be showing you how to wrap up a sprained elbow, another challenge. That's actually harder to do than a sprained knee. But the same though, because the bone structure is very similar in the elbow. So now, is what we do. You unfold where you folded from. Take the splint off. Take the ace, wrap the, the ace, ba unwrap the ace bandage. Alright, 
it's just, and that part just goes off like that. Now, for spare elbow, you can't use this Franklin brace because this is an ankle brace. It won't, it won't work. <laughs> Anyhow, here it is. I know it's in bad shape. I'll buy another ace bandage soon. So, for an elbow, here's my right arm. I'm going to do my right arm because I'm lefty. I don't want my left arm to be splinted, obviously. So, here's what we're going to do. So here's my arm. Here's what you want to start with. I would say you can start it at the hand, but you don't want to use too much material at the hand since it's an it's all if you do a long arm posterior splint, it goes from the deltoid muscle to the wrist. So we would have to so I would say start start wrapping at the wrist distally. The proximal landmark is the deltoid muscle. Extend it to above the elbow. Make tucks and folds with extra material when necessary. And here's the posterior long arm splint. And make sure to put extra padding around the bony provinces such as the the ulcranon and the antecubital fossa because you want that protected. It's a very good thing to have protected when, you keep it, when you're splinting it. And you could buy splint if you sprain your elbow. I've never sprained my elbow, so I don't know too much about elbows. But I know how to do this kind of stuff, so yeah. Let's just get it up. Yeah, it's not to towards the deltoid muscle, obviously, but this is enough support for the elbow. Then what you're gonna do is fold it, and as you can see, I can move the wrist, you're allowed to. Take the extra material, fold it to make the wrist free, because with usually elbow injuries, you don't have to worry about the wrist immobilization, just arm and elbow and upper arm obviously. So now as you can see my wrist is free. And so that's how you deal with the front elbow. Now one thing I didn't show you yesterday was how to do it if you have a big toe injury. Now this is the heart this is maybe this is much harder than the elbow and it's also it's it's just as hard as the ankle, it's pretty tough for a toe spica so here we're gonna do here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna go towards my foot So take the ace bandage and wrap it around the big toe, first of all. You could do a toe plate, but we're not we're probably not gonna integrate one in here. Because I don't like toe plates at all, because it affects the range of motion of the other toes. And then we wrap distally around the metatarsal head, which is right here. Extend it proximally. And yes, we do splint the ankle in this case. Still working on it, hold on. It takes a while. Not the easiest thing to do, obviously. And better if I started like around here at the ankle because we need to get it stabilized somehow because this is this is how you have to deal with a big toe. It's much harder than a little toe, and I'm going to show you that one in a minute. Because it's the great toe. 
and there's two bones in your big toe, the distal phalange and the proximal phalange and the DIP joint and you have a sesamoid bone obviously and in the big toe it's a lot more complex than the smaller toes okay now that you have that take the Franklin angle brace you want to stabilize the ankle because it's a big toe and you need to immobilize it if it's sprained or broken but I would say go to a dock if it's broken because they usually cast it for a big toe I know it sounds kind of suckish but they have to it's your center of your balance but not always I know cases where they don't I know a person that has and they actually did uh, cast it for because it broke part of his foot too alright so anyhow without further ado that's the first part the splint and now for the second part wrap it tight now here's the challenge make four of the metatarsals free but don't make the fifth the first one free because you need that to be immobile for the big toe okay so now as you can see and another thing to keep in mind make it kinda like a plate you wanna do this there's a good reason for doing this actually to check the circulation to the big toe so what I would do is fold down the padding just so the nail bed is visible it's a good idea Okay, check the circulation to the injured toe and now this is it a toe spike of splint this is an actual splint but normally it'll go over the toe like this what you could do is you could cut out wedges of padding if you wanted to but I would say if, don't cut it out oh, that, that doesn't seem too smart in my opinion do that that's how you treat a big toe now for injuries of the lesser toe it's actually a lot simpler so here's how you do it if it's, you have a you don't even have to wrap the foot if it's a small toe watch what you have to do I'll hold down my camera for a minute You know how when you could buy those finger splints at the store, they come with this band around it to immobilize the injured finger? Well, the thing is, this is great like a buddy tape loop for the toe. So, point at the foot. Let's say you break your second toe. You know, and the doctor can only do the same thing because it's just a smaller toe. So what you do is you would strap that one to your big toe at the joint. It has to be at the joint. Well, obviously I could bend it, but we're going to wrap an ace bandage afterwards, so I won't be able to after that. So now, we're going to wrap it just around the toes. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Ugh. Just around the toes, as you can see. Now. It's very difficult to split just the toe part, actually, to tell you the truth. And you see, the metatarsal head has to be immobile because try and get this toe splinted in the proper position. That's our main objective. Uh, as you can see, we're doing pretty well with it. That goes around that. And you splint it till it's snug but not tight it takes a lot of forearm muscle obviously to get it this like this because it's kinda hard to do it's harder than it looks anyhow alright now once that's done we take now we could take now what you do is you take it around the foot partially